when we talk about the democracy, about uh, using IT for supporting the democratic process, then we can uh, see two main fields of activity. On the one hand side, there is, it is about preparing decisions, about supporting this information gathering process, this decision making process, when people really come up with uh, or form their opinion. And that is uh, the so-called e-participation field, in contrast to the one where it's really about the decision the decision making, the actual uh, decision, which is called e-voting. So we have those two main fields that we can talk about. I'm going to talk, when we talk about e-participation, then it is really about uh, the field where there is where there is not really a lot of structured procedures going on. I mean, there can be, but it's not only about that. And that's where the strongest potential actually lies in the area of e-democracy. Because there is one distinct feature that IT provides us with, and that is making us disconnected from our location, meaning that we can participate from anywhere where we want so we can develop our society from a face-to-face -face society that, would, that required uh, residents to uh, a, global, not a, a globalized society where we could actually participate in whichever political process we want and where we're actually interested in. So really our interest would drive our participation and not only the residents that you would have to participate. So, E-democracy and e-participation really enables us to make uh, more informed decisions to actually be able to follow our interests uh, the most. And here, over time, uh, we have developed several kinds of tools that, that can be uh, categorized according to two dimensions. On the one hand side, the IT complexity, which uh, can be understood as uh, from a very simple technical process of providing information uh, to a communication process, which can be either unidirectional or bidirectional, so meaning exchange, uh, to a transactional process where actually things will be changed in databases. And on the other hand side, we have the political process, which actually is similarly structured, which is about gathering information, which is about discussing, and last but not least, actually making a decision. And uh, when we take those two dimensions, then we can actually lay out our field for e-participation quite nicely, because e-voting on the one hand side is kind of the most complex form of e-democracy applications, being a transactional uh, service that is about making decisions. And Everything else, pretty much, is an e-participation process. May that be an e-deliberative process where people are actually able to discuss, to inform, learn about an issue, uh, about, um, can be a, a process which is about participatory budgeting, where people actually participate in uh, finding the right kind of projects, the right kind of initiatives, how to improve local life. Uh, even to uh, processes where uh, one could be informed about the political decision uh, or a political opinion of oneself, where you could match your own political perspectives with those of political parties, those so-called so vote navigators. Also, it must be clear that not all forms of uh, e-participation are suited to be introduced at the same time. Some of them are more complex and some are easier. When we can think about uh, webcasting uh, sessions from Parliament, that's something that can be relatively easily implemented. While when it's about uh, vote navigators that need a lot of preparation, the right questionnaires, finding out what political parties mean, then this might be something that needs more time. Or even if you could think of a platform that is about monitoring uh, representative decisions, really 
uh, when you have, for example, you want to know how a political party uh, stands on nuclear power supply and you want to see how they actually vote in parliament and there would be a website that actually analyzes voting behavior in, pi in parliament and would tell you immediately as soon as a, a parliamentarian votes differently than what they had promised during the electoral campaign and you could then organize your demonstrations or protests or trying to influence the decision making of that politician. So you can see that e-participation can a manifold uh, possibilities how to influence the political process and how to uh, actually make decision making on both on the side of from the citizen but also on the side of politicians better and trying to bridge that gap.